to Marissa. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, girl. How was your day? That was good. It was chill. I was just sewing, um, trying to get my mask orders out. So, yeah. yeah. I saw you were doing that. Congratulations. Um, what is the, the brand or organization that you're working with? So it's called Tender. Um, it's by this model, Jacina. She lives in Atlanta and it services, um, it's basically like a nonprofit organization that empowers single mothers um, by providing them with like the bare necessities and whatnot. So since so many mothers and just people in general have been affected by, you know, COVID-19 right now, um, I just wanted to donate for Mother's Day, essentially. Oh, that's such a great thing that you're doing. I saw that. <laughs> Damn. I really want to buy one, but I have so many masks right now. <laughs> but y'all, y'all should add another to the rotation. Yeah, y'all should definitely purchase a mask if you still need one. Her brands, A U and A G, yeah, and A G. Okay, I know it's I'm pronouncing it like plus. <laughs> like Ow Ag. I, I thought I asked for this. So I'm like, is it Ow Ag? <laughs> but that's like the the Spanish chick in me. That's yeah. how like Spanish person would pronounce it. So there are the atomic symbols for gold and silver because I started as a jewelry mm -hmm. brand. Mm -hmm. So That's it's like so very, cool. very literal. And I like to keep like the lab influence in there with like the branding and whatnot. I so. love that. I'm prepping today. Yeah, those earrings are fire. You made they'll them. Be coming out. Yes, they'll be coming out soon. Do you make like all of your items? No, not everything. So... I just started sewing again. Um, the bag or harness vest that I released for All Star Weekend, I actually had my friend Tisha. She has a brand too. Um, and she helped me with those. She sewed them all. We went through like a four, like four samples to get it right. And then, yeah. Okay. But well, damn, you're you talking about everything I want to talk about already. So, <laughs> for those of you just tuning in, this is Marissa. She is the creator, owner of AU Plus AG, a dope ass jewelry streetwear. I would say it's like a lifestyle brand now. Sure, maybe. <laughs> Based off what I'm seeing on the Instagram, yeah. but we'll get into that, you can explain that. She has face masks that you can purchase that are going toward a charity called Tender mm -hmm. that helps single mothers. And she recently just did a dope ass collaboration with the NBA All-Star um, program in Chicago, because you're from Chicago. Yeah, girl, tell us about where you're from. I love Chicago. <laughs> um, yeah, grew up in Chicago, South Side all day. Hey. Um, loved it, obviously. But then uh, when I graduated from high school, went to college in Boston, then moved to New York, and now I'm back in Chicago. So, yeah, it's, it's been a ride. <laughs> I feel like people, especially in New York, like motherfuckers here in Chicago, they mm -hmm. automatically think of Southside or like <laughs> the full of shootouts and shit. Like, oh my God, now nah, I'm not going to Chicago okay. because I'm going to get shot. I'm going to die. Mad New Yorkers have that stigma. So can you please tell us how Chicago really is? I yeah. mean, like, I, know, like, I, I mean, it, there, like the stigma isn't for like no reason. Like, obviously it's like, real out here right. um police brutality um gang violence etc like that is all very real but i always tell people too it's not like if you come to chicago you're not gonna be in the hood you're not gonna be mm -hmm. like you would be downtown probably you're gonna be seeing like the better parts that are you know policed a little more kept up so it's not like that everywhere. It's not like you just gonna go outside and get shot. Like, right? Yeah. Would you come really to New York that. City? Because I feel like it's a lot like New York, just like a smaller version. Yeah, it definitely is. I, I feel like when I lived in New York, anybody that had been to Chicago will always be like, "Oh, it's like a clean New York," and I'm like, "I guess, sorta, sorta." Yeah, that's how I consider it a clean New York. I love Chicago. Like, I would dead live in Chicago. One, if it didn't have so much winter, like for that, I would stay in New York. Mm -hmm. And if, um, I don't know, I feel like there's opportunity there, but obviously not as much opportunity as there is in New York or like LA. Right. And that's what I feel like, um, aside from me already, when I, going to college East, I felt like it was just natural to stay East. And I feel like moving home, it was hard to like really get into a grind here. Like I've been home two years now. 
and I feel like I'm still trying to get my footing. But in New York, everything's like on go. Like anything you want to do, I feel like you can easily kind of do it because everything's just operating at a different level, you know? Whereas here, you have to get a little more scrappy. You have to network a lot. Um, not that you don't in New York, but it's just like a lot more boom, boom, boom versus here, I feel like. Right. But I mean, so you just seem pretty like well connected. Um, obviously, I'm sure that came over time and like you built those connections. Um, why don't you tell us a bit about the come up of AG? I'm sorry, AU. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's still pretty new. I, in my opinion, it's still pretty young. It's two years going on two years old this year. Um, but when I started out, I was actually still living in New York when I decided that I wanted to do it. Um, at the time, I had been laid off from my job, um, and it was just like, okay, what am I going to do? Like, I'm working, I was working at a restaurant at the same time at Miss Lalisk, um, and I was just like, I need something of my own. So I was like, okay, I want to sell jewelry. I want to, like, eventually collaborate with bigger brands. I want to work with other designers, and I was like, but I have no real proof that my work itself is credible or like that anyone is even interested in it. So that's kind of like what spurred the idea. And then I just started working on it um, while I was still living in New York. And then finally, when I moved home, I launched it in June of 2018 with just like pieces that I curated, jewelry pieces that I curated, but I wanted the branding to be really strong. So like I said, AU and AG, those are the atomic symbols for gold and silver. So my jewelry cases are actually Petri dishes. Right. And then have like a lab label on on top just to keep it like very consistent. Yeah. That's cute. Then, thank you. <laughs> and then um, same with like the harness vest. I had that idea for a while. But when I was living in New York, I felt like I was so focused on just getting a job and just surviving that I didn't have time to like find a seamstress that could help me or like just right. get manufacturing in that way. Um, so when I moved Wait, home, so were all those harnesses hand sewed? Yeah, by my friend Tisha. Girl, those oh. harnesses are so popping. I want everyone to because <laughs> no, those harnesses are so fire. How did you even like get that collaboration with the NBA? So it's not. It wasn't with them. It was just like I decided to release it that weekend, and all the jerseys. Um, I just found myself like online or at a thrift store or whatever but I was also like really specific with the players that I wanted or the team right. that I wanted. like I was sending them to my friend Simone I saw her in here because she's very knowledgeable about basketball and I I feel like I'm knowledgeable about the culture around it like what right. people are wearing but not like or who the top players are but not like for real for real um, but I'm really into like tactical style and sports style. So I feel like that I was just like, what can I do to kind of cross and merge the two? So yeah, that's kind of how so like, these are the um if people can see it. <laughs> I, love love it. Love it. <laughs> I love them. They're so fucking cute. Thanks. So fire. Which y'all can purchase on her website. On my side. Um, no, but that's fire. So would you say you prefer New York over Chicago? Because, like, I don't know. I feel like in New York, it would have been a lot harder to produce something like this NBA collection um, that you came out with during oh. All-Star Week than it would in Chicago. Mm hmm I feel like it was, like, the stars really aligned because All-Star Weekend was in Chicago this year. And like I said, even though I had thought about the idea a while ago, I was kind of like, I was just going around it. I was like, okay, I'll get to it when I get to it. Like, it'll right. eventually happen. And, um, like, my friend, my seamstress, she, she really, like, put her foot on my neck like, girl, get this done. NBA All-Star is, like, next week. You need to stop playing and just push them out. Um, but I do feel like, I don't know. I feel like I could have done it in New York. It, it would have been different I feel like for where I'm at with like man trying to get a manufacturer for things I'm doing right now living in New York would be a lot easier right. just because Chicago doesn't really have that um infrastructure and like the few people that do manufacture anything it's like everybody's going to them so I don't know it's really just trade-offs again my thing is like handmade so it's not like I needed like a whole team 
but now that I'm trying to have like larger quantities produced of things and um, not just like one off pieces like mass produced it's kind of difficult no yeah it's I've been trying to get into like fashion too like it's so intricate and so like there's so many steps to the process if you don't know how to make your own clothes which it's like so <laughs> frustrating for me because I like doing things as much as possible myself just because it's better to have all the control in your hands but some things you gotta yeah but I also feel like if you can afford to pay people to do the things that you need to be done and they can do them better you might as well because right. You, can, you literally can't do everything yourself. And it's like shooting yourself in the foot almost. So you have to know where to like lo offload things to right. make it easier for yourself. Has that been a difficult thing for you to um, like process or make that realization? Um, I feel like yes, because I'm so hands on with everything. I'm like lean over your shoulder type. Like, let me watch you do it. Um, in the process right but, yeah I feel like I'm definitely getting a little I don't want to say lax I'm still like on top of it but I feel like I'm trying not to be as nitpicky because it's like at some point it'll never like things will never get done if you keep trying to tweak and tweak and tweak like at some point you just have to be like all right this is what it is and it's gonna have to go out like this right I totally get that it'd be so hard like when it's the actual person's death yes. <laughs> it's like fuck but then, you know, when you release it, nine times out of ten, it's, like, a great response from the world. So right. that's a pleasure. But where, where are our biggest critics? Like, I feel like I'm, I'll notice something. I'll be like, I know everybody's about to see that. And then I'll show somebody, and they were like, I didn't even notice. And I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so you're from Chicago. Who are you listening to from Chicago? Like, who are your favorite artists out there? Ooh. That's a good question. I feel like I'm listening to some female, well, I'll say a female rapper right now, Baja. Um, she's like up and coming. She's pretty new. She just started, um, but she's super dope. So you guys should check her out. Queen Key, I'm listening to her. I feel I like, like I'm finding out, you know, the female <laughs> artists right now. Yeah, I feel like those are like probably the main two I'm listening to. At yeah, this point. shout out to all the female artists. Yo, there's a lot of good artists that come out of Chicago and like yeah. realizing it. Um, like Jeremiah, I didn't know he was from Chicago until like <laughs> two years ago. I'm like, damn, he's been running. <laughs> right. for um, that being said, obviously you love music, fashion ties into music. We actually met during Fashion Week. We did. What a fucking coincidence. At Miss Lily's. Yes, at Miss Lily's. It was such a great night. Like, I had so much fun that night. It was did a you long night. night. Girl, I had so much fun that night. Um, yeah, I mean, it was dope that we had that experience. Uh, that being said, to me, I mean, I, I consider you an it girl. Me and my best friend, Alyssa, also considers you a love it girl. That. So I really want to talk to you about the difference between being an it girl and like being a groupie. Oh, because <laughs> I feel like you're you're well respected mm -hmm. by you know you have great connections. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Well, thank you definitely because I'm like oh okay praise thank you I appreciate no, that. You, you have to you gotta make that um like know that about yourself because. There's just some girls out here moving in the wrong ways, and it's it's like ruining it for ruining it for all of us. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like for me, I've just always tried to stay true and authentic to like myself, to my style, to whatever it is, um, and just work hard. I feel like I haven't been handed anything, and people know that. I've always been that person that's kind of like even just scared to ask people for help and I'm just getting to the place of like all right no because I don't want them to th think of it as like oh I'm just asking you and I'm not even your friend like using them right. right um and I think people have noticed that and if I can do anything for people I will um just trying to like always give off that natural and authentic energy and just being keeping it real like I am big on networking but it's like look if we have mutual interests we might as well support each other right and 
yeah, I feel like that's like people can see that, which is just why I guess you can see that, which is why you've said this. So yeah. <laughs> In what places would you say have you made the best connections? Oh, definitely New York. But like doing what exactly? Like what well, I mean working at a specific place so or I feel like um I've worked at a couple magazines and that's definitely like helped me meet so many people when I first moved to New York I was an in intern at Galore magazine and then I started working there um, freelance but like I made probably the majority of my connections from working there just because it was like we would have influencers or celebrities in and out the office like you're really getting to talk to talk with these people and then I will become friends with these people and then going to events like either actually like shooting at an event or just being at an event like different things like that and keeping in contact with people um yeah I feel like that's how I made most of my connections just through work being an editorial like you have to cons you're consistently covering things there's new stuff to cover every day so right. At that point, when you were like interning and grinding in New York, working at these magazines, what was it that you were pursuing? So my background is in film. I went to college for film. Oh, and I was, I that. Yeah, so I was a, the assistant video editor. Yeah, assistant video editor at Galore. And then I actually produced like an episode of a show there. And then um, when I, after that, I was like interning at High Snobiety for like a month um, because the video producer the senior video producer there left so my internship got cut but again I was doing video there um and then when I went to Allure I was a fashion assistant which is like working in the fashion closet which isn't what I necessarily wanted to do but I was like okay I'm at Condé Nast now like I right. can move within the magazines and that was the goal to um ultimately get like a video position um uh, but then got laid off and now I'm a producer um at an ad agency in Chicago on furlough now, but yeah. Oh my God, congrats, that's so dope. Um, How has the pandemic affected Ela right now? Yeah, so when it first hit, like things started slowing down and now um, I'm on furlough actually. So until, you know, this is over and work picks back up, like I won't be going back to work. But um, yeah, most of our stuff is like social content, social video. I did something for Hulu, something for Foot Locker, just like a lot of cool clients. White Claw was another one, like just a lot of dope um, brands that I've had the opportunity to work with and like produce content for. Um, what would you say is the key thing an artist can do to, I guess, connect themselves or get a brand deal with mm -hmm. the brand that they may be interested in like what do you look for I guess when you're like booking influencers and yeah so work? now since I'm in Chicago I feel like it's a little different than if um I was in New York here we kind of like you if you want to work with for example like White Claw or something like if you're tagging the brand we see that you're actually like engaging it with it that's one way like people think that that isn't real like no brands really find you like that same with like the hashtags um people like are looking I'm looking like when I'm trying to cast right. I'm going on social media um another way is just yeah I feel like social media is like your best tool these days like people think um you need an agent or an agency which is great that does help you because we we've gone through agencies but a lot of brands are in the, the face of I feel like with budgeting not trying to maybe necessarily have to pay that agency fee or like there's a whole different contract that comes with working with an agency versus like someone who's just popping online you right. know so I feel like if you're just consistent online and showing like that you actually are you know work trying to work with brands like the brands you want to work with um it'll come to you but also I feel like you have to be bold in emailing people um just trying to find their emails out there people have their emails in their bio like right email. like send them your stuff tell them to keep you in mind simple things like that do like, you think it helps to like email even the little people like not the head honchos but maybe the assistant camera guy if you happen to find someone I feel like sometimes, yes, because 
it's at my agency it's like a very all hands on deck type of situation so it's like okay maybe we everybody knows we're looking for this type of person so if they came across you like they would be like look this person emailed me it's really that like boom bam then that's less effort for me to have to go find I'd be like okay per perfect this person is interesting do they fit the bill yes or no right or yeah I feel like you you really never know where an email can go it's just about using every fucking outlet you, you got to use all your resources Take especially the now it's such an oversaturated industry like social media because there's mad people on social media let's just be real right but if you can niche yourself down and make those specific tags and hashtags you're doing yeah. yourself justice and um, I the email or just contacting somebody sorry um no no it's okay it kind of it's like that extra step to show that you're actually interested you know what i mean it's like okay mm -hmm. this person is is actually putting in the effort to work with us so they're not going to be on some bullshit like they right. really want to get it done no facts now that i think about it i feel like i low-key messed up a few potential <laughs> really good brand partnerships because of me just being like lazy or irresponsive or not taking it serious um but yeah my bad i just thought about yeah. it yeah <laughs> I, I, well. um, I mean marissa Alyssa asks marissa do you enjoy the work you do do you enjoy the work you do or would you prefer to work for yourself um i feel like i look at them separately i i do enjoy the work that i do i feel like i like telling stories even if they're not my own I yeah. feel like I like like adding that little extra sprinkle on it or and just like tightening things up sometimes um because sometimes like at an agency it's like everyone's kind of like to pitch an idea we're like all rattling off ideas to start and then I'll get narrowed down until like the client settles on something and then we build out from there so it's like fine I really enjoy like fine-tuning an idea and making it into what it is um and I feel like with a like my own brand there's not always gonna be all of that additional stuff to do in the sense that like I'm not gonna always be trying to tell like some elaborate story right. or it's like with a brand you do have a aesthetic that you're going for so it's like I have all these other ideas that don't necessarily fit into that um so yeah what would you say is like five years from now what's your ultimate goal when it comes to you your brand and like working for somebody else Ooh, five years from now okay um i want to be i want my brand to be in i don't want to say a department store but in a store originally i would have said like barney's or opening ceremony but they've shut down now so yeah. <laughs> I guess That's like, crazy, a Dover, right? like a Dover Street would be dope. Um, even like Kith. Um, yeah, stores like that. Like that's definitely a goal. Um, career wise, I'm trying to get a short film out. So want to push that out. I really want to be like more active in um, directing videos. I've directed two music videos and I'm really trying to like go full throttle and direct more. Um and I've been That's wanting fine. to write, like, I've really been wanting to write, but I'm not, like, a blog person. Like, I don't feel like I just, like, want to rattle off my all, my ideas all day. Like, I'd rather be telling other people's stories or bringing attention to something that's like happening in the world so thank you I saw that comment those <laughs> things are biased fuck um that's dope girl honestly I did not even know you were so heavily into um film and like behind the scenes I think that's fire because there is a lack of women on that end of the industry mm -hmm. so that would be fire if you like became yeah. Okay, that's <laughs> that's the goal too, but that's oof, even further. Just because yes. I feel like I've been on, I'm trying to think if I've been on a film set. Oh, I have been on a film set, and those days are just so long. Even with like commercials, and even when I've done music videos, like that, I've just been like a PA on or something. I'm like, bro, like music videos. Forget about it. Them should be the whole day, twenty four. Right. Right. And I'm like, I don't think I'm there yet to to commit that much. I have so many other things that I'm trying to do. Um, 
But down the line, we'll get to the features. Soon come, soon come. I'm also <laughs> excited for, um, well, I don't know if you're really going to do this, but since these pillows. Oh, I am doing them. <laughs> I will. I'm purchasing them. Like, honestly, these pillows just gave me a whole new aesthetic idea for my room. Because, like, my room is so girly right now, which is not a problem, but I want to, like, Make it a little more masculine, you know? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I ain't this girly, you know? <laughs> like, I don't know I'm why. like, that pink wall says otherwise. <laughs> right. No, that eyes. <laughs> um, but no, I really, like, I hope you drop those pillows. They're so... They're, they're about to... I'm trying to get them out by the end of this week. But look, the way sewing is set up, my back. I'm like, this is... <laughs> this it's is what... Yeah, this is why you hire people for this. I'm like, nah, I'm man. tired. Nah, girl, you got this. It'll be well worth it in the end. I will definitely be copying copy these. Drop them. But yeah, girl, thank you so much for joining me today. I love, love, love this conversation. You definitely dropped some gems. Um, does anybody have any questions from the audience? Well, I see my friend talking about where the red pillows your red pillows are in the works. <laughs> oh, so you taking custom <laughs> orders? I will take custom orders. Okay. And my best are also, if you hit me and you want a custom order, you could do that too. Those yeah. vests are so popping. I'm not even going to hold you. Like I'm like, damn, should I spend money on things like clothes and stuff i haven't been pressed to spend money on clothes but i am pressed to spend money on like house goods because i'm home yeah exactly that's why i was like oh, let me do something with these pillows real quick <laughs> but that's how i feel too which is kind of i feel like puts me like in a weird space right now just mm -hmm. I'm like okay no one's trying to really buy anything outside of i guess for you know the zoom calls but even that like no one's shopping like that but there right. also are a lot of people that are it's just hard to tell i've been trying to do like a temp check to see where people are but everyone's just all over the place so. it's so hard to tell especially with the country like being divided into like they're opening up but they're not opening up right it's like opening up for two hours a day they're opening up for zero it's od my bad i'm just reading these comments um but yeah i i hope you I hope you figure it out. I think it's okay to still make clothes and jewelry and stuff like that because eventually, like, I honestly, like, I'm tired of looking at my clothes. Yeah. And there's only, like, three pieces I can honestly say I'm waiting to wear when I open up. Right. And I'm I sure I'm not the only person thinking that. There's so many people yeah. in the world, so. I know, but I feel like one thing I saw a lot of people saying it was like what is even gonna be what are like the trends gonna be or like the styles gonna be like new styles are they gonna be like we just don't know what anything's gonna look like or what right. we're gonna want to be buying because it's just a different I don't know it's not like that much time has passed but it's like right now spring summer clothes should be dropping and who knows by the time we get out of here what we're gonna be want to be buying and if they're like practical in the way that we need them to be or designed in the way just I don't know I was like these are all great ideas we we do not know and it's like nowadays like I feel like you shouldn't even limit yourself like drop it anyway because we don't know what's gonna happen right like we can be out tomorrow and shit is gonna be normal or we can be in the crib for another two years and facts hopefully that <laughs> don't happen but <laughs> but um anyway Thank you so much for joining me. I definitely, this was one of my favorite conversations. I love informational, you know, jemmy combos. Hopefully y'all benefited from this. I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel if you missed it. Um, if you're new to the show, thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And follow me on Instagram. Follow Marissa. She has dope ass items on her store. Her brand, AU plus AG. And thanks, girl. I'm going to death on my stylist friends to hit you. Okay, we need the pools. That's yeah. the thing, too. I'm like, no one's shooting stuff right now. So I, I have hit up stylists. But I'm like, keep me in mind. Yes, I, I'll definitely put the word in. Because those harnesses, editorial. <laughs> <laughs>
period. All right, girl. Thank y'all for tuning in. Be safe. Thanks for tuning in.